Okay, so this is an extension to the video on the 50 quarters problem. And for a little bit of background on this problem, remember you're blindfolded, you're sitting at a table. Out of the 50 quarters on the table, 17 of them, 17 of them are heads up. And you want to flip or put the coins in two piles so that each pile has the same number, exact same number of heads. So what we did in the other video to talk about the solution, and I guess here, uh, I should say again, I'm giving the solution. So if you want to work more on this riddle, stop watching this video and go solve it. Here I'm talking about why the solution works. So suppose you make a smaller table of 17 quarters, a, a smaller group of 17 quarters and a larger group of 33 quarters. When we flip the group of the smaller group of quarters, what happens? Well, what, we've, what we talked about in the last video is that when you flip all the quarters in the smaller group, it doesn't matter which coins you grabbed, both the large group now and the small group will have the same number of heads. And, and why is this happening? Well, let's say on the small group of quarters out of you know, the 17, we can say, well, x is the number of heads in that small group of coins, a small group. And there are 17 coins in the small group, so then the, the, we can say, well, 17 minus x equals what? Well, that's the number of tails. So for example, let's just say that on that small table, uh, we have five heads, right? So that's x. Well, no, that means that 17 minus 5, or 12, is the number of tails on the small, in the small group. Now in the large group, Right, we have to think about how many how many heads will be there. Well, there are seventeen coins that are heads up. And we want to subtract the amount of coins that were heads up in this in the small group. So the number of heads in the small group. Because we already have grabbed them and put them in the small group. In small group. Well here, seventeen minus x, what does that equal? Well, 17 is the number of heads minus the number of heads in the small group. This will equal the number of what? Well, now this will equal the number of heads left over, right? Because, again, there were 17 coins to begin with that were heads up. We took a certain amount of x that were heads up and put them in the small group. And now the rest of the coins that were heads up should be in the large group. Right, so 17 minus x equals the number of heads. Oops, so let me give you a little example of that. So, for example, if we had chosen five heads up coins here, well, that means that there are 17 minus 5 or 12 heads, and those will all be in this, in this large group. So now we, we start to get to this point where um, we can see that there's definitely a connection between the two groups. It's, it's that the number of heads in the large group, 17 minus x, equals the number of tails in the small group. In both cases, 17 minus x, right? 17 minus x equals itself. It, it's, that's what it is, it's 17 minus x. So in the small group, when you take 17 minus x, we get the number of tails. So in the large group, 17 minus x should equal the number of heads. And that means what? Well, let's write this out. This is the transitive property here. The number of tails equals 17 minus x, and that also equals, that's from this part, 17 minus x also equals the number of heads. So if both the number of tails in the small group and the number of heads in the large group, I should, spe I'm sorry, I didn't specify that. Oh, man. Well, the number of heads down here are from the large group. The number of tails down here are from the the small group. And let me let me just write that over. Clear this out so we have room. I don't want, don't want to miss this. This is my favorite part. Uh, where we I feel like this really helps us understand what's happening in this riddle. Okay, so let me say that again. So 17 minus x that equals the number of tails in the small group of coins, and 17 minus x equals the number of heads in the large group of coins, what does that mean? Well, once you put this all together, we can say the number of tails 
in the small group equals 17 minus x, which also equals the number of heads in the large group. And why is that important? Well, this tells us that no matter how we pick the coins, because we don't know what x is, right? We don't know the number of heads in the small group. We can now see that no matter how we split these coins up, as long as we put them in a group of 17, this is the small group of 17, and a group of 33, the number of tails in the small group is going to be equal to the number of heads in the large group. So the number of tails in the small group equals the number of heads in the large group. So to make them both have the same number of heads, all we have to do is, is what? Well, flip all the tails in the first group because that's the same number of coins as the heads in the large group and we want to get the same number of heads in both groups. So by flipping these tails, we know we'll get the same number of heads. Again, because we have the same number of tails in the small group as heads in the large group. And I, I really wanted to share this with you because although I feel like uh, I, I had some understanding of what was happening here, it occurred to me to write this out algebraically after I saw how a student solved this. So once again, um, my students have helped expand my understanding of mathematics. All right, I hope you enjoyed this.